My name's Jason. I'm here with Kaylee. We're going to be taking you through a nice range of postures. And we'll be showing you some variations because obviously you're not doing this class with a teacher in the room. So it's really important that you take extra care, really listen to your body, and just do whatever feels appropriate. We're going to sit for a few more moments before we begin this sequence. This yoga practice is really all about the breath. This shtanga based sequence employs the full deep breathing that you may be familiar with, but if this is new to you, then we're going to do a little bit of a recap on that. So it's important that you feel comfortable sitting, just nice easy cross legs. You can have your hands on your knees or interlace your fingers. Nice to take the gaze slightly down and just take in a few moments here to tune into your breathing. And we do this with the mouth gently closed. So as you begin to breathe in through the nose, just be aware of that sensation of inhale. And as you begin your next exhalation, try and really just tune into the quality of what that feels like. Smooth breath in through the nose. Smooth breath out through the nose. Tactic we use to try and really keep us tuned into the breathing is to now breathe slightly longer, deeper breaths. So as you begin your next inhalation through the nose, try and make that last just a little bit longer. And then as you begin your next exhalation, breathing out through the nose, make that last a little bit longer. And see if you can get some sense that the length of these slightly longer inhalations last approximately the same length as the exhalations. It might be something like this. Breathing in through the nose, keep breathing in. Breathing out through the nose, Keep breathing out. Smooth, steady breath in. Smooth, steady breath out. In addition, we want to try and feel a little bit of support to the breath and when we get there in the postures themselves. And we do this by just bringing some awareness to the abdomen area. This area around the navel, which you want to very gently feel like you're just switching on. Not too much because we want to try and hold this throughout the practice but as if the muscles are very gently drawing your belly button in a little bit. And hopefully you feel a little bit of a difference now because some stillness down here will try and divert more of the air that we're breathing in and out up here into the chest area. So as you breathe in through the nose, try and feel this expanse across the rib cage as you fill the lungs. And as you smoothly breathe out through the nose, emptying the lungs, feeling that sense of contraction. This is where we want to try and be in all of these yoga postures then as we move through this sequence. So your challenge from now until we take our Shavasana at the end, really try and make the priority, the breath, connection with the breath, and then we're just going to move through a nice selection of postures. But just a couple of moments here. Smooth, steady breathing. Try and just direct your attention onto the breath. Cover every inhalation with your awareness and every exhalation. So this isn't just a really great physical workout, it's also a great mental workout to try and just find a little bit of space in your head. Try and let some of these repetitive thoughts, and especially at this time, lots going on in the world, try and just let some of that drift away, even if it's just for the next 50 minutes or so. Okay, so we're going to start moving now. We're going to do some gentle warm-up little stretches just to get us into this practice. So remember, nice and steady, keep breathing. We're going to uncross our legs and we're going to take the feet back behind us. And we're going to come into a nice gentle sphinx posture where we take the forearms out in front of us. We're lying down on our fronts. We're just going to separate the feet a little bit. And some sense that your shoulders are stacked up above your elbows and elbows about shoulder distance apart. But before we do anything further, just press a little bit of energy back into your toes. So you want to feel like you're supported behind you. And you don't want to lock the legs, but if I press a bit of energy into the toes, I'm just feeling my kneecaps coming off the ground. Then I'm going to gently press into the forearms and try and feel like my chest is going forwards as the shoulders melt back. 
And it's really important here to feel like nothing is pinching in the lower back. Try and feel like you're getting a little bit of this spread to the upper back. And you don't need to lift the head too far, maybe just even looking off the front of your mat. So nice and easy on the neck. And just breathing a few breaths here because this is a really useful preparation for all of the upward facing dogs coming up in the sun salutations and through the vinyasas later on. Just another breath here. Make sure it feels like the shoulders are melting back away from the ears. And then we're going to just back off a little bit. We're going to tuck our toes, slide the hands in, briefly pressing up through cat, but all the way back into a nice, easy downward facing dog. This is where we let our head hang. We keep the fingers spread behind the head and we're looking between our feet. The toes are spreading into the mat. And on this first down facing dog, we might want to just bend each knee and turn just a few times just to stretch out the legs. Keep the hips lifting, trying to essentially keep moving the chest back towards the toes, but nice and easy on this first one. You might want to move the hips from side to side. And there's going to be plenty more of these coming up, so a few more options when we get there. For now, we're going to look to our hands. We're going to walk the feet about halfway in. We're going to soften the knees a little bit. Make sure we feel comfortable with all of the weight going down through the soles of the feet to release the hands off the ground, to switch and hold opposite elbows, and just do a nice, easy, gentle hanging forward bend. This feels too intense on the back of the legs, the hamstrings. You can just soften the knees. But try and feel like you're not just sinking down into a squat. So over time, we want to try and feel like the hips are going up towards the ceiling as we let the upper body just hang down towards the mat. At some point, you might actually be looking back behind you, but wherever you are, maybe just looking down at the space in front of your feet might be a nice way in. Wherever you are, try and make sure the head is nice and heavy, nice and soft around the shoulders. Just another moment here. And then we're going to very gently unwind to come up to standing. As we come up to standing, we're going to interlace our fingers. We're going to press our palms in front and try and feel like the arms are energized as the elbows move towards each other. And as you're looking straight ahead, nice and steady around the shoulders, keeping the arms switched on, just going up as far as feels appropriate. So at some point, you might get the arms straight up towards the ceiling, but not at the expense of the shoulders dragging up towards the ears. So try and keep the shoulders rolling down. Keep the feet planted into the mat, the toes spread, and just look straight ahead. And a few breaths here. Now you can stay down on your feet. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can come up onto your tiptoes and press. And we're going to see from here if we can gently turn just a few degrees across to the left. Just take it nice and easy on the neck. We're not worried about how far back we're looking. And then inhale back to center and exhale. See if we can take that out to the right, just a few degrees. Try and feel like you're unraveling from the base of the spine upwards. So the head is the last thing we're worried about. And then turning to face the front. And let's just drop down. And it's interesting as you look at the way you've interlaced your fingers, and yoga is all about balance, to switch that the other way around. Just a brief reset, palms out in front, taken up as far as feels appropriate, either down on your feet or possibly on your toes, but this time we're leaning to the left. So we're going to keep the hips facing forwards as we take the arms out to the left. Your hips are going across to the right side of the room, wherever you are. And then inhaling up to center. And then keeping the hips facing forward. So we're getting a nice side stretch. As we reach out to the right, the hips are going left and a little bit of a stretch down the side of the torso on the left side. Try and keep the head nice and relaxed in between the shoulders and the upper arms as we come back up to center and then drop down onto our feet, hands by sides. And now we're going to make sure that we're at the front of our mats with the feet nice and close. If it feels okay, you could have the big toe sides of the feet touching as if they've been zipped up and the hands are by our sides. Palms are facing in and we're looking straight ahead, ready to move through some sun citations. Going to keep a little bit of energy to the abdomen. Keep that focus there. Make sure you're breathing these full deep breaths, filling the lungs as you inhale, emptying the lungs as you exhale and we coordinate breath with movement as we move through four sun salutations, taking the first two nice and steady. As we inhale, we float the arms up, gently looking up to see our palms facing each other. As we exhale, we might want to soften the knees, and to begin with, maybe just placing hands on shins or ankles and just let the head hang. 
Stay connected with the hand. So as you inhale, lift the gaze, straight arm, straight back, looking just off the front of your mat. It's really important to bend the knees as much as you need to to plant the hands firmly down, stepping the feet towards the back of the mat, a little way apart, knees down, elbows in, and press to lower. Similar to Sphinx posture, but here it's Cobra. So the hands stay where they are. Inhale, press back into the toes, lift the chest, roll the shoulders back as far as feels appropriate. Tuck the toes, press into the hands, hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Now we're gonna be in all of these postures for five breaths. To begin with, if it's too intense to do these downward facing dogs with straight legs, just soften the knees. Try and keep pressing into the fingers behind your head, but keep the hips lifting, that's already two. We breathe in through the nose, fill the lungs. We breathe out through the nose, empty the lungs is three. Try and feel a little bit of awareness to your abdomen, supporting this full deep breathing is four. One more breath is five. Inhale, looking to the hands. So take this nice and steady. The challenge is to get the feet back to where they were. Just a few steps, but if the hands start coming off the ground, replacing on shins or ankles as you lift the gaze, so we're finishing in reverse, we can soften the knees. Exhale, falling down, just nice and steady. Inhale, press through the toes, float the arms up, finishing the way we started as we look up to see our palms facing each other. And then exhale, hands to sides, palms facing in, looking straight ahead. Nice and easy on this second one. As we inhale, float the arms up. Gently let the gaze follow. Palms are facing each other. As we exhale, fall forwards, you can soften the knees a little bit further to go as eventually put the fingertips on the mat, but let the head hang. Wherever you are with the hands, stay low. Straight arm, straight back, lift the gaze. Bend the knees, hands flat, fingers spread. Stepping the feet to the back of the mat and press as you exhale the rest of the way down. Flicking onto the toes. And if you want to go a little bit further than Cobra, thighs energized. Lift the chest, roll the shoulders back away from the ears as upward facing dog. Either way, exhaling and pressing back and up into our second down facing dog. Keep the hips lifting, keep breathing. It's one. Feel that nice sense of spreading the fingers into the mat behind your head is two. Keep the legs switched on, even if the knees are slightly bent, those muscles above kneecaps are engaged. That's three. If it's too intense at any time, soften the knees, or you could even come down onto your knees if you need a little bit of a breather. It's four. One more steady breath. It's five. Inhale, looking to the hands, a couple of steps, or eventually one step back through, feet together, straight arm, straight back. Exhale, falling down, let the head hang. Inhale, press through the feet, float the arms up. Eventually the palms are getting closer and closer, but more importantly, the arms are straight. Exhale, hands to sides. So we're gonna do two more, and we're gonna go just a little bit quicker. Keep breathing. Inhale, float the arms up. Gently let the gaze follow. Exhale, falling down. Hands go down, head is hanging. Straight arm, straight back, stay low, lift the gaze, look forwards. Eventually, as you bend the knees and the hands are flat down, you could jump the feet back, no problem to step back, elbows in, as you press the rest of the way down. Inhale, remember to press back into the toes so the legs are active as you inhale, lift the chest, roll the shoulders back, upward facing dog. Exhale, rolling back over the feet. Keep the hips lifting, down facing dog. Remember the direction of movement. You're trying to move your sternum, that's the top of the chest, back towards your toes. So you're gently lengthening out the spine, Keep the fingers pressing into the mat behind your head. If you're losing the focus with the breath or you're struggling to breathe, just back off. Remember, you could bend the knees. You could even drop down onto your knees if you need a few moments to reset in cat posture. It's already four. And five. Eventually, as you inhale, look up, you might be able to jump the feet back through. No problem to step back through. Stay low, lift the gaze, straight arms. Exhale, eventually with straighter legs falling forward, soften the knees if you need to. Inhale, press through the toes, float the arms up, gaze follows. Exhale, hands to sides. Everyone's doing really well, last one. Inhale, float the arms up, we're looking up. Exhale, falling down, let the head hang. Inhale, lift the chest, let the gaze follow, straight arms straight back. Exhale, bend the knees, hands flat down, jump or step the feet back, elbows in. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you're just hovering off the ground, no problem if you've come all the way down before. Inhaling cobra or thighs off the ground, upward facing dog. Exhale, pushing back and up, last down facing dog. So hopefully we're feeling a little bit of heat building up now. Maintain that awareness to the abdomen. Keep filling the lungs fully as you inhale. 
empty in the lungs as you exhale. Try and feel a nice amount of space around the shoulders so the head is hanging, the arms are working, the legs are working, and we're breathing full deep breaths. Couple more. Here's four. And five. Inhale, head up. Jumping or stepping the feet to the front of the mat. Lift the gaze. Exhale, folding down. Let the head hang. Inhale, press through the toes. Strong arms, look up. Palms getting closer and closer. Exhale, hands to sides, looking straight ahead. Okay, so we're going to move through some postures now and link with some movements where we bend the knees and sink down into a posture called Utkatasana. We float the arms up and we look up and we hold in it for five breaths. So eventually it might be fingers up towards the ceiling and the palms could even get closer, but we're making sure we've got lots of space around the shoulders. But these two opposing forces at work, one that's sinking you down into the mat and the other that's lifting the fingers up away from you. Let's just hold that for a few more breaths. So that's four. And five. Now we're going to keep the knees bent. So we're going to explore putting the hands down on the mat wider than the feet just in front. So try and feel like there's an equal amount of weight going down between hands and feet. Stay low as you lift the gaze and look slightly in front of you. Now from here, you're set up to do a little bit of a bunny hop and a jump back into the upper plank we're about to hold. But if it's too much, of course, you can just step back. I can feel my feet pressing into the mat, heels up towards the ceiling. My feet are a little way apart, and I'm looking down at the space between my hands. And if I'm feeling this is too much or I'm struggling, I could put my knees down just for a little bit of support. A few more breaths either way. Make sure you feel happy with the pressure going down through the wrist. Try and press the mat away from you. Keep the shoulders rolling back. And then elbows in, press. Eventually knees down, flick the feet out away from you. And we're going to just be here, ready for a cobra we're going to hold for a few breaths. A little bit like Sphinx. And of course, you could always go back and do Sphinx if cobra felt a bit too much. Press some energy back into the toes. Lift the chest. Roll the shoulders back. And breathe a few breaths. Make sure your breath is nice and steady here. Smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. As before, make sure it feels OK along the length of the spine. Try and keep lifting the chest forward as you roll the shoulders back. If you're a little bit lower down, no problem. See if we can hold it for two more breaths. So that would be four. Remember, press into the toes so the legs are energized. And five. From here, press, briefly moving from cat, tuck the toes into downward facing dog. We're going to keep the right foot facing forwards. The heel's going to come off the ground as we step our left foot between the hands, ready for lunge warrior. Now, eventually, we do this with this back right leg straight. But if you need to put that right knee down on the ground, you can. Make sure you've got your balance as you come up. And then extending the arms up towards the ceiling and breathing a few breaths here. Try and roll the shoulders down. You want to just keep a little bit of space between the palms. And you're looking straight up between them. Nice, strong back leg. Feel the support in that left knee. Remember the option if you need to put that right knee down on the ground, no problem. And you might want to put that right knee down on the ground as we twist to the left. Pressing the palms gently together. See if you can hook your right elbow on the outside of left knee and this left shoulder rolling back. And then you could gaze back and up behind you. And if you wanted the additional challenge of doing this with a straight right leg, you could for a few more breaths. When we twist, We've got to make sure we're still breathing those nice, steady, even breaths. Smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. From here, we're going to place the hands down on the ground. Then we're going to push and step back to our down-facing dog. And then we're going to step the right foot forwards. So your left heel might come off the ground, but the toes are still on the mat. You could move straight into it with this straight left leg, but you could always put that left knee down on the ground. We're facing straight ahead to float the arms up into our lunge warrior. You could if you wanted to move the palms a bit closer or a little bit of space there. As we said previously, keep the arms nice and strong, the shoulders rolling downwards as the fingers lift up. Keep that back leg nice and strong, hopefully feeling something on the top of that left leg, feeling support from your right knee. One more breath. And then we're going to twist to the right side. If you want to move straight into it, keep that back leg straight. If you need to put that, Left knee down on the ground. As you press the palms together, make sure your right shoulder is rolling up and away. You don't want the shoulders to collapse in towards each other as you look up and back behind you. 
and breathe a few more steady breaths. It's already four. And five. Exhale, hands either side of the mat, press back, and we're in our downward facing dog. From this downward facing dog, we're going to do more of a traditional warrior, Thirubhadrasana. So we're going to turn our left heel in, look back at that foot turned in halfway, and try and commit to keeping it on the mat. So previously the heel came off the mat, but not now. See what you can do to step, and even if you need to move this right foot forwards in space, to bend the knee. So you really feel this connection with this back leg flat on the mat. We're facing straight ahead, and then we're going to float the arms. Eventually straight up towards the ceiling. You might begin here, no problem, just get your balance. And take it nice and easy on the neck if you're looking up. And again, if you wanted to try and draw the palms a bit closer together, you could. But you might want a little bit of space there. And make sure you feel support in that right knee. Keep that back leg nice and strong. And we're just going to breathe a few more breaths here. Keep lifting the fingers up away from you. Feel the support from the legs. And from here, we're going to turn and we're going to do this posture facing the back of the mat. So you might want to look down and switch the feet. That back right foot should be turned in and this left foot is going to swivel across so you get a real sense you're lined up to the back of your mat. Sink down over that left knee. Feel the connection with that back right foot on the mat and gently look back up. Remember, it's too intense to have the legs going straight up towards the ceiling. Just have them slightly in front of you. Got the option to have a little bit of space between the palms, but feel the palms are like magnets getting closer together. Feel the little toe side of that back foot pressing into the mat. One more breath here. Now from here, we're going to open up into warrior two. So we're facing the long edge of your mat. This left knee is bent, that right leg in the same position. We're in a T shape, so it doesn't want to feel like we're slanting forwards or being pulled back. The arms are outstretched, but we are gazing over our left fingertips towards the back of your mat now. Try and feel like the palms are almost pressing down into something solid. Feel like the fingers are moving away from each other. Even though you can't see that right arm behind you, make sure it feels like it's switched on. This is Virabhadrasana two then, and we use the same leg position to move us into Parsvakonasana as we exhale a nice way in when you put your left forearm just in front of your left knee, and we can, to begin with, float this right arm straight up towards the ceiling. If you want to go a little bit further, your right palm can face back, and you're trying to bring this arm in a straight line. If it feels like it's coming across to the side, better to go straight up. If it feels okay on the neck, you can gently look to your right fingertips, and the full posture, if you wish, you could put this left hand down on the ground, but you've got to try and keep this right hip rolling up wherever you are for a few more breaths. Then we're going to inhale, come up. We're going to make sure the feet are parallel. We're going to float the arms out. We're going to stay in the middle and exhale our hands onto our waist, finding that connection there. We're about to do a forward bend with the feet obviously a little bit wider, so we're going to take this nice and steady. Use the thumbs to keep the hips in place, feel a little bit of awareness of the abdomen as you inhale, lift the chest. So the two options as we go down, one might be to take your hands along the length of the legs, shins, ankles, eventually big toes, the other with the knees soft if you need to, to put the hands gently down on the mat about shoulder distance apart. So we're taking an extra inhale to lengthen out through along the length of the spine. As you exhale, whichever variation of the posture called Prasarita Padrasanasana you're doing. Try and make sure you've got a nice amount of weight going through the feet. Spread the toes, let the head hang, and try and feel like you're almost drawing your torso back through between the legs. Eventually you might feel like the top of the head is closer to the mat, but wherever you are, make sure everything makes sense for you. Doesn't want to feel too intense on the hamstrings. You can soften the knees if you need to. Head is simply hanging. Lots of space around the shoulders. And a few more breaths here is four. Smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. It's five. To get out of this, it's inhale, straight arm, straight back, wherever you are, just come up halfway. Exhale there. Make sure the weight going through the feet to release your hands, squeeze into the waist. Find that connection to then inhale the rest of the way up and exhale. And another nice variation for the shoulders of press region to Padrasanasana is to inhale, take the arms straight out to the side. Feeling your way with the hands behind your back to interlace your fingers. Try and maintain that connection as you inhale, lift the chest, straight arms, roll the shoulders back. 
And as you exhale, and I appreciate there's nothing in front of you here, so make sure you feel that support. Try and keep the toes spreading into the mat. To begin with, it's great just to get a sense you're stretching the arms up towards the ceiling. Ultimately, they're gonna come back behind you and down towards the ground. And again, just completely letting the head hang. Eventually, you might feel the crown of the head on the mat and breathing a few more breaths. Make sure the legs are happy. Keep lifting the hips. It's four. Five. Inhale smoothly all the way up. Exhale there. Take the hands to the waist. Just squeeze in, find that connection. We're going to take the arms straight out to the sides, palms facing down. And we're going to look to the feet, right foot to the front of your mat. Just turn that back left foot in a little bit. Keep that left leg straight, look down. See your right knee tracked over the heel. Make sure again you're facing the long edge of your mat, torso perpendicular to the ground, arms making a T shape, but now gaze over your right fingertips towards the front of the room. So now we're in warrior two on the right side. And even though I can't see my back left foot, I'm really feeling the little toe side of that foot pressing into the mat behind me. I'm feeling secure with the weight over that right leg in front. And we use the same leg position to move us into Parsel Konasana. As we exhale, a nice way in is just to put your right forearm in front of your right knee. Keep this back leg strong. Turn your chest to the side and just begin exploring this posture, left arm straight up. Or you might be able to turn the palm, your left palm, to the front of the room. And just even if it's a few degrees, bringing this arm directly to the front of the room. So we get this nice extension down the left side. Try to not let it go off to the side. Better to go straight up. Full posture could be to have this right hand down on the ground. But I'm really conscious I'm rolling my right hip up. And I'm lifting to eventually look towards my left fingertips. A few more breaths. That's four. And five. We're going to inhale, come up to the side, give the arms a nice stretch out. We're going to exhale and turn on that right foot and step to get back to the front. Feet together, hands by sides. So let's have a go at doing variations on warrior three. So we've done all three warriors in this sequence. So as we look down towards our feet, we're going to keep our left foot facing forwards. We're going to turn our right foot halfway off to the side. We're going to slide that back foot halfway back down our mat. We're going to put our hands on our waist and just make sure we draw a left hip back, right hip forwards. So we're directly facing the front. Here we can take our hands behind our back to hold elbows, wrists. Some point we might be able to get our hands in reverse prayer position, pressing the palms together. That's optional. Wherever you are, inhale, lift the chest. Now, steady your way as you fall forwards over this left leg. You can soften the knee, try and let the chest lead the way, and breathing a few breaths. Nice amount of weight as you go forwards, presses back into that right foot behind you. If you need to soften that left knee a little bit, you can. Looking gently to the toes, smooth, steady breathing. I'm gonna come just halfway up, we're going to soften our left knee a lot more just to take our hands down on the ground. Fingertips, but eventually maybe the palms. Just see how you get on. You need to balance and press into that left leg. Nice, easy forward bend. And look behind you to see your right foot floating. And try and get a sense it's a straight line pointing straight back behind you. Try and keep it frozen in space as you inhale, lift the chest. Now with your right leg out behind you, you might mirror to begin with, your left hand going forwards and keep that right hand on the mat. Eventually, you could extend both hands out in front of you, palms facing each other, or you might want to explore taking the arms out to the side, palms facing down, keep breathing. Keep that left leg nice and strong, you can slightly soften the knee, just feel that nice support, and then exhale, soften that knee more, bend the knee, right foot comes down behind you, hands down, just take a moment there, and then inhale, press to come up to standing, to reset. We're gonna switch sides. So this time your left foot turns just off to the side on the heel. The left foot, make sure it goes at least halfway down the back of your mat. Hands can go on waist just to draw our right hip back, left hip forwards. So we are facing the front of the mat. Could be different on this side as you put your hands behind your back, holding elbows, wrists, or eventually reverse prayer. It's worth taking an extra inhale to lift the chest. Try and let your chest lead the way. 
soften that right knee or just take it easy. You might just be this far in the posture. If you're going further, try and let your chest go out first. Let the head follow. So we're eventually looking towards our right toes. Keep that right hip drawing back up and a nice amount of weight pressing back into that left foot behind us. This is Parsvottanasana, side stretch on the right side. And um, we've just thrown in this extra posture before we're now we move into Virabhadrasana Warrior. Three on this right side, we're gonna come up halfway. We're gonna soften that right knee a lot more to take the hands, fingertips, eventually the palms, but nice, easy forward bend to begin with over your right thigh. See that left leg starting to lift, switch it on, try and freeze it in space parallel to the ground, lift the chest. Now this time with this left leg, lifted you might just even be here or you could explore your right arm going out in front very slightly lifting the gaze and eventually left arm either palms facing towards each other or off to the side variations then on go to badrasana c or three so even just hold it for one more nice strong breath keep that right leg working and then exhale Soften that right knee, hands down, left foot down. Take a moment there, and then inhale, press to come up to standing, feet together, hands by sides. So we're gonna glue our right hand onto our waist. We're trying to commit to not letting go. Bending our left knee, holding up underneath the knee. A little bit further to go is reach down and hold the big toe with two fingers, and standing up nice and tall, looking straight ahead. It's all about direction of movement, as it is for all of these postures, to eventually straighten out that left leg in front of you. But if that's too intense, keep that knee slightly bent. Keep that right leg switched on. Three. Steady breathing, four. And five. Now we're gonna make a switch. Wherever your left hand was, you're gonna replace it with your right hand. And that might've been underneath the knee. Left hand can initially go to your waist. But as you stand up nice and tall and do a little bit of a twist to the left side, we're gonna extend that left hand out behind us. We're gonna look eventually back behind. Nice and easy on the neck. We're standing up tall, we're breathing. And all of the variations that may just have your left hand still on your waist. It's four and five. As we inhale, center up, both hands on the waist. Now if it's too much to keep this left leg straight up there, you wanna just lower it down. So you might just be here with the toes pointing out in front of you. So we're not standing with the knee bent now. And over time, you could lift that leg a little bit higher, which is three breaths. And four. Both hands squeezing into the waist. Lift that left leg a little bit higher. Five. Exhale, release. You might wanna give the legs a little bit of a shake out. But your left hand can stay on your waist as you bend your right knee. You could pick up underneath the right knee for five breaths. Once you're committed to reaching down and holding onto the big toe with two fingers, make sure your palm is facing the left side of the room. You could be here. And incrementally, it doesn't need to go from bent knee to suddenly straight. Over time, a little bit straighter with that right leg. Press down to the ground with that left foot. Keep looking straight ahead. It's four. Five, and we make the switch. Wherever your right hand was, and it might be underneath your knee, replace it with your left hand. Right hand on your waist, or eventually that right arm behind you. Stand up nice and tall. Do the best you can to balance. If you come out of it, just reset for a few more breaths. Strong left leg is four. Five, well done. Inhale, facing forwards. So if you can just jump to this position, you can. But if you need to reset, no problem for it to be a little bit lower with that right leg. Try not to lean back. Tummy in, slightly lean into it. Keep breathing, three. Strong left leg, four. One more steady breath, five. Exhale, release. Give the legs a little bit of shake out. And let's do one more standing posture, tree posture. Left foot turns halfway off to the side. We're gonna slide the toes down onto the ground, heel up. Nice way in, making sure our left knee is happy. It's all about rotation to the hip over time you might be able to get this left foot a little bit higher up. We feel the connection here, so we're also balancing on this right leg to place our hands in prayer position, press the palms together, try and stand up as tall as you can, looking straight ahead, keep the shoulders nice and soft. If you've done this before and you wanna explore taking the left foot a little bit further across into half lotus, 
really gently then, you could hold your left foot with your right hand. Make sure your left knee feels okay. Left hand eventually going around behind your back to possibly hold right elbow. A few more breaths wherever you are. Before releasing that left foot down onto the ground, feet together. Last standing posture. Right foot turns off to the side. Could be different. Most important thing is we are just concerned with this right knee. We're not twisting it. So this could be enough. A little bit further up. Or if you're going higher up, try and feel a little bit of inward pressure. So the toes are pointing down. I feel the sole of that right foot up on the inside of my left leg. And then with that nice, strong left leg, hands in prayer position, standing up tall. Melt the shoulders down the back. Look straight ahead. A few breaths here. In Vikrasana, on the right side, with the option, and it could be different on this side. So nice and gently, if you're taking this right foot a little bit further across to do what's called a standing half lotus, with this right hand possibly going around your back, holding onto your left elbow. And that's already four breaths. And five. And releasing that right foot down onto the ground. Feet together, hands by sides. So we're going to take now what's called the vinyasa. It's a little bit like a sun salutation, but from our down facing dog, we come through to sitting because we are now ready to do some seated postures. Inhale, float the arms up, let the gaze follow. Exhale, falling down, let the head hang. Inhale, stay low, straight arm straight back. Exhale, bend the knees, hands straight down, flat on the mat, jump or step the feet back, elbows in to go down. Inhale, press back into the toes, cobra or thighs off the ground, lift the chest through, upward facing dog. Exhale, all the way back, down facing dog. From this downward facing dog, we're coming through to sitting. So as we look to our hands, we're going to stay low this time. And eventually, we might be able to cross the ankles as we sit down. But whatever it takes to sit down and then straighten out the legs in front of us. It's important when we sit down on the ground to make sure the legs are still working. So the muscles above my kneecaps and thighs are still gently engaged, and it feels like the thighs are almost slightly rolling in towards each other. And I'm just going to take my attention to my toes, making sure they feel like they're spread nice and wide. And I want to try and feel like the soles of my feet are flat on an imaginary wall in front of me. Now this is how you want to maintain the awareness of the legs when either of the legs are straight. Now we're going to move into a few postures where we're going to alternate sides. So keep your right leg switched on, and let's recap without standing and worrying about the balance, of a similar movement to tree posture called Janu Shishasana, with the sole of this left leg could be lower down, could be a little bit further up on the inside of this right leg. Might want to support my knee, but if it's happy floating in space, that's okay. I want to make sure I'm not off to the left, but I am actually facing straight ahead. This is a combination posture, so I'm aware of the rotation in my left hip. I'm making sure my left knee is happy, but I'm also going to go forwards. But I might just begin having hands either side of that right knee. Remember, keep this leg switched on. Inhale, lift the chest, and exhale, falling forwards as far as feels appropriate. And that might just be here. Nice, soft shoulders. If you want to go further, you could eventually reach for your foot, your toes, and as you go down, of course your spine is curved, but we're trying to not just collapse the head down, we're trying to get the chest going out over this right leg. And as far as feels okay on the back of that leg, make sure you're not over pulling anything. A few more breaths here. Making sure that your shoulders are super soft. It almost feels like they're melting down your back. So nothing really should feel forced in any of these postures. So, we're going to inhale coming up out of Janashasana. We're going to do a twist now to the right where we can either keep this left leg where it is as we bend our right knee and with this right foot facing forwards flat down on the ground, my right heel is close to my left toes. But if I wanted to go further, I could possibly take my left leg out to the side with my heel now fairly close to my left knee. The full posture, and you don't have to do this, could be to take this foot on the other side of the knee and eventually your left foot almost facing more behind you but the most important thing is to try and make sure your right hip is melting down into the mat so actually before we twist to the right we feel really balanced sitting facing forwards a few options to twist are to get your left hand around the outside of your right knee 
right hand, well, fingers, just not too much weight there behind you. You want to inhale, sit up nice and tall, and exhale, turn your torso, let the gaze follow. A little bit further to go could be to maneuver your left elbow on the outside of that right knee, ultimately your left shoulder on the outside of the knee as you breathe a few more breaths. Just out of interest, the full posture is to slide this straighter left hand down and get your fingers around the big toe side of that right foot. And if you did want one more challenge, this right hand could come off the mat. Good if you wanted just to explore that to make sure you don't fall backwards and take your right hand round your back. Eventually your fingers moving towards the top of that left thigh. A few more breaths, wherever you are. But when we twist, do make sure you can breathe as easily and as effortlessly as we were at the beginning. And that's already four breaths. Smooth breath in through the nose, fill the lungs. Smooth breath out. And five. We're going to inhale, face the front. We're just going to reset by straightening out the legs. And we're going to do some vinyasa preps, where we're going to cross our left ankle over right, draw the knees into the chest. We're not forcing anything here, but you could almost get your fingers, maybe a little monkey grip, in front of the shins or your wrists and just round down a little bit. Just let the head hang here for a moment. Now, maintaining this slightly curled position, release your hands, spread your fingers flat down on the mat next to your hips. We're going to, in a moment, inhale, and we're just going to be concerned about trying to move the hips away from the mat. Don't worry about your feet. Nice, long, smooth breath in. Press, lock the arms, try and get the hips off the mat. A little bit of weight goes forwards. Exhale, come back down. We're going to slide the hands a little way behind us and then just get our knees into the chest as we inhale. And you need to do a little bit of work there to make sure something feels like it's happening. And exhale, and then it's a combination of those two things. But don't worry if it feels like it's not actually happening. And more of this is from an internal lift. Keep that awareness to your abdomen as you inhale, press, and then exhale, come back down. And we're gonna do that on the other side and complete that vinyasa after those two postures on well, the left side for Janus Shasana. So straightening out the legs, and this time we're going to keep our left leg switched on, so those toes up towards the ceiling, and gently, and remember, it could just be here with this right foot, the sole of the foot facing in. If you want to go a little bit further, it's up against the inside of my left thigh. I could support the knee, this might be enough. It's okay hanging in space. Make sure I'm not off to the right, though. I want to feel like I'm facing directly forwards. So. Keep an eye on that knee, doesn't want to feel like it's twisting. Over time, we get more openness in the hip to put our hands to begin with, just either side of our left knee. Nice, relaxed shoulders, inhale, lift the chest, and exhale, and you might just go so far forwards. If you're gonna go a little bit further, you could eventually take the foot itself. There's no pressure to do that. Try to not collapse your head down. It's not about trying to put your head on your knee. It's trying to take your chest out over that straight left leg and if it gets to the point where it feels too much on the back of that left leg then you know make it make sense for you just breathe wherever you are nice soft shoulders feeling like they're rolling back behind you gazing eventually down or maybe just catching sight of your left toes and we're on the right side of Janu Shishasana for a few more breaths And as we inhale, come up, we're going to twist now to the left. So your right leg can stay where it is as we bend our left knee straight up. So remember the same options from the previous side. Your heel might just be close to your toes and you're ready to twist from here. If you want to gently move this foot further across, then my right knee is on the left side of that left foot. And maybe my foot is facing straight out to the side. Ultimately, I could take it further across and that foot almost behind me, but I'm not going too far. I need to make sure this left hip is firmly down on the mat. So I'm facing forwards in this leg position before I think about twisting. Nice way in, wherever you are, is to put your right hand around the outside of the left knee. Left hand, which eventually could come off the mat, but nice to put it down for a bit of support. I want to try and inhale, sit up. I could be here breathing five steady breaths. I'm following the direction of my torso. I'm not worried about how far back I'm looking. I might just be looking straight across to the side of the room with the option to put my right elbow and even my right shoulder on the outside of that left knee. Full posture, if you wish, is to straighten out your right arm down the length of that left leg and reach around for the big toe side. And option to take this left hand off the mat behind you. But if you feel like you fall back, just keep that hand down on the ground. Just a couple more breaths. Smooth breath in, try and sit up tall. 
smooth breath out, just feel that nice twist, it's four. And five. Inhale, face the front. Exhale, straighten out the legs. So, a little subtle switch as we take our right ankle over our left knees to chest. So, let's just try and get the feet underneath on the little toe side of the feet without forcing anything. Knees to chest, don't stress the knees, so maybe just fingers round, wrists, eventually elbows, let the head hang. And try and feel like you're in a really compact shape with your head hanging between the knees. Try and stay in this shape as you release the hands and place your palms by your hips, fingers spread nice and wide, flat on the mat. To inhale, press down and see if you can get your hips off the ground, a little bit of weight tilts forwards, and then exhale, come back down. I'm gonna just do an extra movement we did on, on the other side with the hands behind us. Inhale and really try and feel like that lift of the chest towards the knees as the knees come in and breathe in. Exhale, and don't worry, don't be discouraged. Both of those things happening might just be the intention to make it happen. So if you inhale and it looks like this, that's fine. Eventually, knees into the chest, and this is the beginning of our vinyasa. We're gonna come down for now, but eventually that upward lift would tilt us forwards to get the feet behind us. For now, you might just wanna actually get ready to put your hands in front of you, and you could always take the legs out to the side Really, whatever it takes to step, hop, walk the feet back, elbows in, press to lower down, and we're going to stay lying down on our fronts for a few variations of Shalabhasana. So we're going to take our hands back behind us, palms up towards the ceiling. For Shalabhasana, we want to try and bring the feet together. You can't see this, but you can feel, I can feel my big toes touching. Same as before, press into the toes. Don't hyperextend and lock the legs, but see if you can get the kneecaps just off the ground. So you've got some energy there. Keep the hands gently resting on the ground to inhale, lift the chest. And what's nice about this posture is it's the same benefits we get from upward facing dog, but we're not pressing, we're not jamming our hands into the mat in front of us. So we have to lift from within to try and move the chest off the floor. But again, you wanna make sure nothing is pinching in the lower back. Keep the shoulders rolling back. Let the gaze just follow the upward lift of the chest. You don't need to try and look up towards the ceiling, just looking down at the ground. A few more breaths. It's four. Keep breathing. It's five. And exhale. Release. Just have a little moment there. That was actually a little preparation for the full posture coming up now. The only difference is that you want to switch on the legs a little bit more just to get the toes off the mat. Just more about feeling the legs coming off the ground than trying to get them up towards the ceiling. So as you inhale, lift the chest, switch on the legs a little bit more, but really it's straight legs, so don't want to feel like you're bending the knees behind your back. Try and feel like someone is drawing your toes back as you lift the chest. Keep nice, steady awareness on your breath. If you can't, maybe just back off from the posture a little bit. It's three, smooth breath in, smooth breath out. Just gently pressing into the fingers. It's four, face nice and relaxed. That's five. And exhale, release. Just come down, have a little moment there. And a similar posture called Danasara, which is bow posture, is now to bend the knees. Come up a little bit, but you need to feel your way. So maybe one hand at a time. I'm reaching back around to ultimately get my hands on my ankles. And I need to do that with each leg. My feet and my knees want to try and stay fairly close. It's okay if they separate, but you don't want to feel like they're kind of really splaying out too far. I'm going to lock the legs, inhale the chest. Now to begin with, I'm going to keep my knees on the ground and just press the feet back behind me. And I could be here for five breaths. If I wanted to go further, the knees come off the ground as the legs are energized, but it's more about feeling like your toes are going up towards the ceiling. But if this feels a bit intense or this isn't happening for you, then just keep the knees down on the ground. That's three breaths. Try and keep lifting the chest. Use the strength of the legs, pressing back away from you to keep you balanced in the posture is four. See if you can hold that for one more breath. And that's five. And exhale, release. And those are really useful postures just to strengthen and find some flexibility in the spine. But it's nice to have a little bit of a breather after that. So you're gonna make a little bit of a pillow with your hands. You can either put your chin down or turn your head sideways and just separate the feet 
and let the feet just sort of splay out a little bit behind you towards the edge of your mat. Sometimes we feel the breath getting a little bit quicker when we do these more challenging postures. So just see if you can take a few nice, steady, even breaths. Smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. From here, we're going to come up. We could slide the hands back behind us and get ready for either a cobra or an upward facing dog. As you inhale, lift the chest and hopefully over time, press back into the toes. It's the same movement. We get a little bit more space there. Exhale, just stretching out. A few moments here in a down facing dog. We did a little bit of a prep for the vinyasa about jumping back. This is useful to practice jumping forwards. We're going to do this a few times. The challenge is to look to your hands, to bend the knees, to eventually put more weight to the hands as you do a little bit of a bunny hop. Now, eventually, you're trying to jump the feet closer to the hands. But my advice to begin with, and I'm going to show you, is to inhale, press, and just get the feet a little way in, and then step back. So as you inhale, press, you want to try and really quietly land the feet. Can you land your feet down without hearing a single sound? Inhale, press, hips up, press into the hands to land the feet. And over time, we might be able to eventually land the feet quietly behind the hands. You obviously need to be careful you don't go tipping forwards and off the front of your mat. So obviously be cautious when doing this. If you've got a little bit more time, you could always do this with a few pillows in front of you. Wherever we get to, hopefully you've done that a few times, we are now either walking the feet or getting them behind the hands. Fingers spread nice and wide. With the hands pressing into the mat, my feet are directly behind. I'm going to bend the knees and try and drop my hips down. So my profile from the side, 90 degree shape, like I'm almost sitting on an imaginary chair. I'm going to inhale, lift my chest, roll the shoulders back and look just slightly off the front of my mat. And remember, I'm going to give you lots of options as we work towards this more challenging posture called Bakasana, crow posture. So you don't have to go much further than this. If you want to go a little bit further, try and press your knees up into the armpits, lift the chest and roll the shoulders back, and progressively more weight going into the hands. So do make sure that feels okay on the wrists. Nice way in before the full posture, if you wish, is to do one leg in turn. So I'm going to bend that left knee and point the toes back. So I'm putting more weight through the hands, making sure that feels okay. I could switch sides and try that right knee, bending back. But eventually the full posture is to try and keep the arms straight, bend both knees, and I can feel my toes touching as I balance here for a few breaths. If I want to come down, just have a moment. I could just be in a little squat like this. Or I might still be holding it. And if you want one last challenge from wherever you are, you could jump or step your feet back from there into the plank, where elbows in, we're going to come straight down. We're going to inhale, upward facing dog, cobra. We're going to exhale down facing dog. And a nice little release from that is to come down onto our knees into child's pose. So you can keep the hands pretty much where they are. Make sure you feel okay bending the knees as you do a nice, essentially nice easy forward bend. You can spread the fingers wider if you like. And just put your forehead down on the mat. And just taking a few moments here. Just make sure you're breathing nice, steady, even breaths. And then inhale, coming up. So just sit back on our knees. So as part of any yoga practice, it's nice to just get a nice range of movements. Obviously, we want to go forwards, we want to go back. We're building up a little bit of strength. We're twisting and so on, building up some support along the length of the spine. It's nice as well to take your body in what's called an inversion, taking it upside down. We don't have to do this all, so I'm just going to give you some nice options. You might want to take your mat or wherever you are and make sure you're up against the wall, because obviously the fear in a headstand is you go too far and you kind of go over the other side. So you're just going to err on the side of caution and lots of tips just to look at this, even if you don't do the full thing. This could be something to work towards. So the main thing is that we set up this nice, stable, triangular base. So we can do this by leaning forwards 
and reaching our fingers just round opposite elbows. But it's really important here to feel like your elbows are plugged into the mat. So as I now bend them, I'm taking the hands out in front. So I don't want the elbows to slide off to the side. I don't want them to come closer. Then I can interlace my fingers. And as I interlace my fingers, I typically, whichever way I've interlaced them, and I can vary this from time to time, I take the finger that's underneath and just tuck that in. So as I place the little finger sides of my hand down on the mat to make a little bit of a cup shape, I'm not pressing into the finger too much that's underneath. So eventually, this is where the back of the head will go. But for now, you might want to actually do a few preps where we're essentially going to try and press back into a down-facing dog. Because even though this is eventually a headstand, truly the most weight goes through the forearms. And I want to try and hold this in this down-facing dog shape. And classically often referred to as dolphin, I could move my chest over here. Okay? So I can just inhale, exhale, and do that a few times. I can go back to this down-facing dog shape. And I'm just going far forward as feels appropriate. So obviously I could have the challenge of coming further forward like this, but I'm not at any point going to lose that and kind of come clattering down. So you need to judge how far feels appropriate. And that might be enough. It's certainly worth doing a few of those preps. If I want to go further, I'm down on my knees. I'm placing the back of my head just up against the palms, crown of the head on the mat, and then I'm just going to walk my feet in. And the feet are quite close. And I could just be here for a few breaths with straight legs. And I'm trying to get the hips kind of coming forwards. And I could just be here and breathe. If you want to go further, a nice way in from here is actually just to extend one leg up at a time. So I could extend my left leg or my right leg and keep one foot on the mat. Switch sides. Eventually from here, I could lift both legs up and start moving up into the headstand. If that's not possible, I could bend the knees and go up like this, but at no point am I trying to jump and press. I'm going to crank my neck if I do that. So whichever way you get up, and if you want that wall behind you, you can just have that for some support, and you could breathe a few breaths. For in the full posture, you're trying to zip the toes up towards the ceiling. I can feel my abdomen lifting me up, and I can feel most of the weight through my forearms, and I'm really aware of the neck, there's no pressure there, minimal amount of weight really on the top of my head. Wherever you are doing dolphin preps or maybe you're just in half of that headstand or exploring one leg at a time, let's just hold that for a few more breaths. Worth holding these inverted postures maybe twice as long if you can, and I'm sure that's already eight, nine, 10, and then can you slowly come down, eventually with straight legs, but no problem to draw the knees into the chest. And we're back down in child's pose, but a nice variation on child's pose this time is to take the arms out to the side and back behind us. So palms facing up towards the ceiling behind, forehead down. Any possible tension maybe there, just melting away. To feel the shoulder soft, the neck is free. Steady breath. And then slowly coming up. So we can, with the hands in front now, just take the rest of that vinyasa, step or hop the feet back. Elbows in to go down. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Exhale. Down facing dog. And maybe those jumps, after a while, will prepare you to bend the knees, press into the hands, press to come through to sit down, straightening out the legs. Ready for our last few seated postures. We're going to do this twice. So we're going to either sit cross-legged with our left leg in front. If you want to go a little bit further, this left leg that was in front could come across into half lotus on the crease now of your right leg. But only if the ankle feels supported, the knee is happy, and enough space around this hip joint. You don't really want to be doing this if this leg is way off the ground. Sitting cross-legged is a really nice way in to, more specifically, take the back of the hands onto the knees, take the thumb and the first finger together, the remaining three fingers pointing away. And you want to try and almost sit back on an imaginary wall. So you could almost feel the hands drawn back onto the knees, a little bit of a lift to the chest, look straight ahead, soft shoulders, maintain this nice upward lift. 
and then gazing down just at the space between your knees. Five full deep breaths here. So just feeling the benefits of this practice. Ultimately, it over time feels more comfortable to sit like this in this more active seated posture where we're sitting up tall, the arms are straight, we're breathing full deep breaths. I can feel the abdomen gently switched on, filling the lungs as I inhale, emptying the lungs as I exhale. Steady breathing. And a few more breaths here is four. And five. But certainly worth switching sides. So I might have my right leg in front now. And sitting like this might be enough. Or it might be enough on this side. I have got the option if I want to put that right foot up onto the left crease. Ultimately, I could have the other leg on top of that for full lotus. That's optional. But let's sit in half lotus if you're doing this for a few breaths. Resetting with the same hand gesture, drawing the shoulders back, straight arms. Nice to look straight ahead to then keep that nice upward lift and draw the chin down. So I want you to really focus in on the breath as I count you through five full deep breaths. This awareness as you inhale through the nose, filling the lungs. Stay with it as you exhale, empty the lungs, and that's one. Begin again. Smooth breath in through the nose, fill the lungs. Smooth breath out through the nose, empty the lungs. Here's two. Try and really focus your attention on what it feels like to be breathing these full deep breaths as you inhale. Exhale. Here's three. Beginning your next inhalation, keep breathing in. Your next exhalation, keep breathing out. It's four. Make sure you feel that awareness to your abdomen to support your last full deep breath in. And out. It's five. Good. Lifting the gaze, ready for our very last posture before we finish. And this is a lift, we press the energy of this practice straight down into the ground, either in half lotus as we're in. If we're doing it in half lotus, I'm just gonna show you, you might have one leg on the floor. You could just be doing cross-legged, trying to draw the knees into the chest, and eventually you might be sitting in full lotus, but you don't have to do that. But if you're sitting in full lotus, then everything comes off the ground. So as you inhale, press, lock the arms, it's one. We're gonna be here for 10 breaths, just do what you can, it's two. Don't worry if one of your legs or both are even on the ground. Three, keep breathing. Four, keep pressing the mat away from you. Five, if you come down, lift up again. Six, keep going. Seven, you're doing well. Eight, nine, ten. Well done, exhale, release. And as a treat for getting through all of that, we're doing one more vinyasa to move through to relaxation. If you're really tired, you've had enough, you can, of course, flake out here if you want to do one more. So knees to chest, hands down, inhale, press, tilt that weight forward, whatever it takes to jump, step, hop the feet behind you, elbows in to go down. Last upward facing dog, breathe in, press back into the toes, lift the chest. Last downward facing dog, exhale, press all the way back, and then inhale, look to the hands, jump, step, hop the feet through, straightening out, the legs nice and wide, let the feet splay out. If you've got enough space, arms can be just off the mat, palms up towards the ceiling. Back of the head on the mat, but the last thing you see is the ceiling as you then close the eyes. So in Shavasana, there's a few differences. The eyes are closed, and now we need to completely let go. So relax the muscles in the arms and in the legs, let the feet just flop off to the side, let go of the full deep breathing, body can breathe itself. Let go of any awareness to your abdomen. Let the tummy be completely soft. So it might feel like your abdomen gently rises as you inhale, drifts down as you exhale. Feel softness in the face. You want to explore slightly opening up the mouth to breathe in through the mouth as well as the nose. That sometimes just 
feels more spacious around the jaw and down the back of the throat. I feel like you're just melting into the ground. Let everything just go. Going to be here a few moments longer in our relaxation. So try and just balance out the stillness of this posture with that quality of mind that is simply resting right here, right now. Try to resist the temptation to let the mind wander off thinking about the future or thinking about the past. See if you can just find some calmness and some peace right here, right now. Try and stay gently alert as you do this. The mind can be very slippery, and before you know it, you're just thinking without really knowing you've started thinking. So in this place of awareness, just going to stay in Shavasana for a little bit longer. And in about a minute, I'll come back and bring you out of this relaxation. So for one minute, can you just let everything go? Simply be present, be in the body, wherever you are, lying on your mat right now. Okay, so we're going to bring a little bit of movement back into the fingers and the toes, very gently. Hands and the feet can move. Going to bring the feet a little bit closer together, and you're going to take the arms up towards the ceiling. If you want to open up your eyes gently at this point, you can do. And optional with straight arms, or you can soften the elbows, taking the hands back behind you, right off the mat. And you can take a slightly deeper inhalation here and feel like you've just woken up in the morning and you're all stretched out. And then as you exhale, we're going to walk the feet in. The knees are bending. The feet eventually come off the ground for us to reach the arms up and back round to give ourselves a little hug. Smoothly then, just moving from side to side and around a little bit on the lower back. And whenever you're ready, staying in that nice curled up shape, you can just roll off to the side. Make a little bit of a pillow if you want with your hands, just to put your head down. Stay curled up. And then when you're ready, you're going to straighten out that right leg. Use our right hand to support if you roll left, opposite if you rolled on the other side. And then just coming back up to the front of your mat. Just nice, easy, seated position just to get your bearings, to take a few deeper breaths. And we're finished. So well done for getting through that power yoga class. Hopefully you can enjoy that nice feeling for the rest of the day. It's a good reminder that this yoga practice isn't just about what we do on the mat, so you can take that slightly calmer quality of mind out with you into your everyday lives. And wherever you are, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching this, and we'll see you again soon. Namaste. Cheers. Okay.